Ryan Reese. This is live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. <laughs> what? Welcome back. Hey, I've been gone. Where have I, you been? I'm kind of tripping on, on the studio. The, the studio's changed. I've been here for a few weeks. I was on vacation for a couple weeks, spending time with my family. So I'm I'm all good to go. How did it end up going? It was amazing. You know, being with my three boys and my wife the whole time. We went to San Diego, went through a whole bunch of stuff. And it was fun. We had some crazy days. We got the three boys, seven, five, and almost two years. My, the car could get bananas sometimes, screaming yeah. and everything. Had a great time. I'm not too tan, though. Because I'm right. Irish. Kind, kind of reddish. Reddish <laughs> kind, of, kind of reddish. Hey, where's Legoland? Legoland is in Carlsbad, right by San Diego. And then we went to SeaWorld and all that kind of stuff. Did you guys too. go to Legoland? No, we went to SeaWorld this year. Have we you been to, there before? Yeah, we've been to Legoland a couple times. So they go nuts. The, the kids love Legoland, but they wanted to go to SeaWorld real bad. So we Dude, went there. SeaWorld is epic. I know. They, I went they, for the they, first time. Well, like, last year. Like, yeah, a year ago. Yeah, last year. You said you never went when you were a kid. No, I was deprived. And you were deprived. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's dope. We have my, the kids all in the shark. They've been watching Shark Week like crazy. All week. forget that. You guys touch the st uh, stingrays? No. Uh, yes, we touch. We touch all the different things. All the they have those little pet sharks that you could do too. The little baby ones. I didn't and see stuff. those. Yeah, those are right at the entrance. Dang. Yeah. So we went. We had a good time. I just talked to my uh, my niece today, Monet, and she says that she was going to uh, Legoland. Now, is there some hotel or something down oh, at yeah. Legoland? Like right. I haven't stayed there before. But it's like right on where Legoland is. So you could be in the hotel and then the back door, you just walk right into the... That is insane. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine going to some and place the whole like that the whole rooms are like decorated like Lego style. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that some year too. Dang. I got to go so much, They have so much amazing stuff for the kids nowadays, man. Damn. So, so much. I mean, I remember being out in New York and... Is there like a, what, what is it? There's like, is it like a Lego store or there's something or out there in New in York? New York? I don't in, know. in Manhattan. So, I think there might be like a Lego store or something I went out there. Yeah, so that's my that's my life too. You know, being a dad, you put a lot of Legos together. Yep. Yep. More money, more more pieces, man. It can get pretty hard, but the, the kids love it, so. But it's like a boy-girl thing now. It's oh, like yeah. a boy-girl thing. Before when I was growing up, it was, it was very, Just boys, it yeah. was boys, but now... My nieces build Legos, yeah, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. So, so I had a great time, man. But yeah, serious change. It's cool. It's different. I got to get used to it. Well, welcome back, sir. Thank you. you I missed, missed it. I missed it, man. I, I listened to, to Wade and Melinda last week and, and the week before. Um, what was that? You had another show. Who was on it? The guy from uh, Sleep oh, Giant? Oh, Sleeping Giant, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, there's some a crazy cool things that, that he said. I liked what he was talking about when he was talking about worship, when he was talking about um, when you're writing music, I think it's so important, like, could you be writing this and singing it straight to Jesus? I thought that was a crazy um, point that he brought up. I thought that was pretty cool. I find myself kind of looking at music like that lately, worship music. You know, what is it about? It's true. Like, sometimes we just sing it, but we don't mean it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in this whole, like... You're big into worship now. It's, it's a crazy thing. Well, I, honestly... I got to get new worship, man. I'm I'm, I'm kind of burned out on everything I have. Yeah. I'm in this weird, like funky place in my life, which is actually a good place. And the listeners, maybe you're in the same place, is when you're so burnt out on your worship music and you mm -hmm. need to get a whole new kit. Right. Um, I've been going through, uh, just going through the Bible with Chuck Smith and I'm in uh, Psalms right now. And, you know, there's like a hundred and I don't know how many, but there's a lot of them. 150, yeah. A lot <laughs> and of them. I'm, at, I'm at 50. And I've been going through the Bible, you know, consistently, but I'm kind of burnt right now where I'm going to step back from going through with Chuck right now. And mm -hmm. I'm just, and I just finished reading through the Bible again. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start over in Genesis. And now I'm going to just listen to, I got to get all new worship and I'm just going to start reading all the way through the Bible again and kind of take a little bit of time off from the Old Testament. And just like, instead of like getting stuck in a study, yeah. I feel like things are just kind of going slow right now. Yeah. It's getting funky for me. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm going to just read through it. All the way through the Bible right now, and then um, to do it again. I do things like that too. You got to keep gotta things fresh. Up. You got to keep things uh, fresh for for a relationship too. Yeah. When you feel like you're just kind of going through the motions of stuff, mm -hmm. sometimes or it just becomes uh, ordinary. You got to switch it up. Like for me, I'm on on the other program right now. I'm kind of just kind of going slow through the Sermon on the Mount. I find myself reading that same 
passage passage mm-hmm. over and over, listen to Chuck. You know, I, I'm going through the Bible, another uh, part of it, but going slower. You know, I've gone through the Bible a lot over the last few years, so I'm still going through, but when I'm going to the new, I'm going really slow. Yeah, you got to switch it up constantly. Like some, some days I'm just like fired up just to keep burning through like three to four CDs a day, mm-hmm. or you know, or you know, MP3s or whatever it is, but... Right now, it's just getting kind of funky. I'm on fire. I'm on fire for God. It's just getting funky in my setup. Right. My, I got like four devotions. I'm like, I got, or five devotions. I'm like, okay, I got too many devotions going on. <laughs> I got to, I got, I'm basically got to go back to the basics. I'm going to simplify. Yeah. I'm going to just read through the Bible. And I'm obviously teaching through the gospel of John. So I am going through, you know, studying, uh, more intensely through one book. Right. But uh, I'm going to get some new worship and kind of simplify my devotion life as well because you find too many devotion books. You're like, that's epic. Oh, right. uh, Upmost for the, or what is it? Um, Upmost for the for science. Yeah. yeah, that. And then I got some chambers. And I got some other ones. But, um, you know, it gets, you could, comp- you could overcomplicate things and yeah. then get burnt out. That's whenever I feel that way, I always get back to simplicity. Yeah. That, that's, that's the same thing for me too. Like, just turn on some worship music, chill, you know, like for me, like a, a devotional, I like devotion, but I'm like a factual guy. Like I, I like when I have that time off the Bible, I'll read doctrine stuff. Like those are kind of like devotionals for me. Like I, I'm somebody that's kind of set up that way. Like mm-hmm. when it was even watching television and stuff, I like documentaries. I'm not into like the fantasy stuff and I like truth. Those are things that kind of like really hooked me. So those are things that are good for me. And that's what each person has to know what, what works for them when it comes into growing in a relationship with God and it, it needs to be fresh. I think that, um, you know, for people that are listening right now, uh, this is live with Ryan Reese. I got my friend Sean in studio. You know, you could get burnt on a relationship with God if you're not switching things up. Mm-hmm. It's so easy. Yeah. I go to church once a week. I do my devotion. I read my Proverbs in the morning. And I'm I'm a good Christian. Yeah. But you're really you're just doing it out of like being religious in a sense. Yeah. Where like you do love God, of course you love God, but you don't have that fire and God's not working in your life. You just got you're stuck in this like this rut or this mm. program, you know? Switch it up. Go buy some new worship CDs. Shoot, buy a new translation. You know, if you're yeah. if you're burned on the King James, buy the New Living Translation. My yeah. dad actually reads every single one of the translations. Yeah, and it helps you look at stuff from a a, of a wider perspective mm-hmm. as well. You know, New Living Translation was the first Bible I ever I read yeah. as well. Uh, it's I've gone fun to through read it. NASB. <laughs> go through New King James the most, but I go through you know go back and forth with all of them too. I like the uh, NLT when it comes to Psalms and Proverbs particularly. Yep. I like the way they break down some of those things. So. Um, yeah, you got to keep things fresh, like in any relationship, otherwise it gets dull. You know, I think just the setup you have for your, your family as well. You know, I, I'm learning along the way, you know, I don't sit down and give my whole family like a 45 minute Bible study every day. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I'll just break down little truths of them, stories. My wife reads with my kids as well. And I pray with my, my family daily. But I'm not giving them long Bible studies, and I, mm-hmm. I never wanted to feel like um, um, this uh, regiment, you know? Yeah. Okay, we got to do this. It's 10 a.m. It's you know, and becomes like this whole structure. I'm trying to be real. The kids will get burnt on that yeah, as well, for sure. You know, I, I don't want that to happen. And even like with, since I had the triplets, and even like my devotion life with my wife. I mean, our whole life has been turned upside down. Right. So we've been literally working on getting back together and praying together. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole night schedule and sleepy. I mean, everything's just crazy. But, um, it's you hard. know, we've been, I got one, we decided, okay, I'm going to bring one devotion down in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> like literally I showed up and it looks like I'm, I'm signed up for my first day at college. <laughs> I come down with like eight devotions. And Crystal's like, you know what? Life's crazy right now. Why don't you just bring one? I'm like, you know what? You're right. You got that from your dad. Your dad does the same thing. He comes into like the a board meeting. I'll come in. You guys got to get this book. It's like 10 of them and 12 of them. And sometimes I, I've laughed because it goes, you guys got to get this one and this one and that one. And he's like, oh, but it's out of print. <laughs> like, why are you telling yeah. us? <laughs> yeah. It, no, it's true. I'm I'm literally, like literally I get books now and I, I, I put them in my dresser and I hide them away. And I'm like, okay, I'm reading through like this one right now. Mm-hmm. I'm reading through these two devotions and then my Bible and that's it. And then when I'm done with this book, I'm going to get rid of this one. And I got this other book in right. line. Yeah. Cause if not, you got, I mean, you could go into my dad's office and he has like his whole desk is full of all these books. He reads through them all. Yeah. 
But I'm not that, you know, I'm not a bookworm like that. Yeah. I'll get like caught up and like have like 20 bucks on my desk for like four years. Well, you know, <laughs> just talking about this stuff right now, right? This stuff is like very important. It's practical in people's lives because, dude, we need to read. Like you need to listen to worship. You need to pray. These are the things that bring growth to our lives. So without them, dude, it's without, it's like living without oxygen. Yeah. And when you're looking at the world and this culture around us, man, it, it's crazy out there. There's a lot of suffering that's taking place. I mean, you turn on the news. Every single day right now, there's a terrorist attack. Another something happened in Bangladesh. And, you know, we do have to have um, hearts that are focused to hear from the Lord at this time. Um, and we want to make sure that we are cultivating a relationship with the Lord that is thriving. You know, mm -hmm. when I go on vacation, it's a lot of perspective changes in a lot of things in a good way because you know we're, we're full-time ministry our, our schedules are crazy my schedule is crazy sometimes uh, a lot of people you deal with a lot of teachings you got going on the radio show all this kind of stuff and so when you put the brakes on and i've learned this when i go on vacation i tune out and i just hang out with my kids and you know not trying to go through all my emails and all that kind of stuff and as it takes a hard, it took hard a couple of days it takes beginning. it takes a couple of days to like turn <laughs> it off it takes a while you know <laughs> you feel like you got to be in the mix and even like looking at stuff oh this i should let these people know about this and i just resist it yeah. and as a few days go on it starts changing your heart so you start being thankful for the things you have that's what happens to me I think a lot of times we can be grinding through so many situations. And I think one of the greatest things I learned to do is start thanking God for everything that I have that is good in my life. Yep. And then it starts putting things in perspective. That's dope. Yeah. Well, someone needs to hear that tonight. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's real life. That is, is real life. We got to switch it up and hear from God to see what he wants to do in our life. And we're going to have uh, one of my friends on the air here in a few minutes. Uh, he's Jimmy. He's a lead singer from the band Dose. Um, they had a new video come out, and it's epic for the That's song Bounce Back. These are This is the band that we take on all the high school tours with us. And he has an interesting little story of how, you know, God got a hold of him. And uh, we're, we're going to talk to him in a minute. But I got to go to the uh, senior pastor's conference yep. at Calvary Chapel. And uh, it's it's been awesome, man. I've been going since I got saved in 2008, and I was just kind of sneaking in through the back door mm -hmm. <laughs> the majority of the time. Right. But, you know, over the last couple of years, God, you know, allowed me to um, to start teaching the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have started teaching the Bible, but I had uh, Brian and Chuck Smith um, invite me to come speak yep. at the church. And if my, because my dad was like, hey, you should teach. I'm like, no way. <laughs> but then when they asked me, it's like, I felt like I had to do it, you know? Because uh -huh. I'm like, I can't miss this opportunity. <laughs> you know, my dad will always let me back in. And then that kind of, you know, Oh, I remember the first time you spoke at one of those senior <laughs> pastors conferences. Like, with all, we had our whole crew with us, and and you're there, kind of sharing the vision of of the whosoever. It, it's crazy. You had Chuck Smith in the front, you had Brian, all of them. Your dad was there. Everybody was awesome door. Yeah, awesome door awesome. to be open. And now, years later, it's so funny because I got to uh, share the vision again, and here we are. You know, I think I shared the vision in 2009. Here we are in 2016 and the vision's the same. It's to the kids. We're doing concerts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got to just get, walk up and just talk about how the Whosoever is a movement leading the way to reflect Christ in culture. Mm -hmm. And the Whosoever is movement, it's a division of Calvary Chapel. It's an outreach division of Calvary Chapel. And, I, you know, I got to tell the pastors and the people that were there, and this goes for not only pastors, but people that are listening on the air. You know, if, if I were to tell them, hey, you know, let's do an outreach and let's go out to the schools or let's do an outreach somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. you know, just to rent the sound system that we have is like five to $6,000. Push, you have the band, then you have to buy the food for the kids. And then we get the Bibles from the Gideons. You know, I'm a Gideon, so they give right. me the, the free Bibles. But if, when you add up everything, the whole production, everything that we're doing, and even rent the generator that, to push the juice to the sound system, dude, this event could easily be seven to ten thousand dollars. Right. So what we decided to do as this outreach division of Calvary Chapel, the Whosoever's Movement, we're doing free tours. We're doing free high school tours. This costs absolutely Nothing. zero dollars for any church, any pastor, any student, any person that's driving down the freeway right now, whosoever gives us a call, 
and and uh, and connects us with the Christian club at their school, we will set up the band, the sound, the stage, and we will come and do a free concert for the whole public school. And we even opened our doors to Christian schools this year, and we've even uh, we're even getting into Catholic schools. So pretty much, we will go to any high school. All you have to do is email us at info at the whosoever's. Dot com and we will come for free and set up a concert and give the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. And the reason why you should be concerned, everyone that's listening and myself and any pastor, is because these kids in these public high schools, they're on the highway to hell. We know that Jesus said that the road is wide to mm. hell, but the road to heaven is, is narrow and few find it. Mm. And, you know, I thought about that verse in Romans 10, uh, 13 through 15, it says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how can they call on him to be to be saved? Um, how can they call him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone goes and tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of the messenger who brings the good news. Yeah. We will go. The whosoever movement will go and we need your help by booking us. We don't need your financial help. Hey, if you want to give, when you give, it provides funds to keep going to the high schools because it does cost to, you know, to get the band. It's, yeah. it's free for you guys. But if you want to give, there's always a need. Yeah. But we want your prayers because we want the Holy Spirit to keep showing up and to keep opening more doors. And also we want you to email us, info at the com, so that we can come and go to go to the schools for free. And what we do is we go in through the Christian club, we give the gospel, and then we plug the kids back into the Christian club. And then the Christian club plugs the kids into the local churches. Yep. So if you're a youth pastor, call us and you could be that middle ground between the church and the and the Christian club to get the kids into the church because it's about discipling the kids. Yep. It's a great vision. You know, I know you've, um, this has been heavy in your heart all last year. And now that we're in July and before you know it, means uh, schools are going to be starting up again. So this is the time to be praying and like taking that step of faith because this is a way that you can get involved. It's one thing to see a problem. You see a problem in our culture. You see a problem in our high schools. But then what you need to do is do something about it. And this is a great way, right? And the, and the guys have an amazing vision. Like he said, this has been on his heart. And that's that's why it was a trip when you were talking about it at the Senior Pastors Conference. It almost sounds too good to be true. It's like, we're going to do all the heavy lifting. You guys do all the work. You set all the stuff up, you know, just the promotion of the whole thing. They just need to give them a green light, get them, a, give you guys an open door, and it's a done deal. Yeah, and the interesting fact is that no one has, I mean, there is money for outreach, but the reality is every pastor and different people I've talked, different people I've talked to, to come up with six to ten thousand mm dollars to just go do an outreach at a school, the, those funds don't really yeah, exist. It's honestly, not, not, yeah, it's not, not easy to come it. up. It's hard to come up with a hundred bucks. Hundred right. bucks is a lot of money. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. But to come up with that much money, but this is why God has provided for us to set this up mm -hmm. to come alongside churches, yeah. any church. It doesn't matter. We will come alongside any church. You don't just have to be from Calvary Chapel. Yeah. Anyone. And we will come alongside you to reach the kids in your community at the public school to plug them back in to your church. And then you guys do your part and you guys disciple them yeah. and, and take care of these kids and, and walk through them, uh, walk through their struggles with them and, and give them Jesus. Yeah. Give them love, give them Jesus, truth and grace, like the theme of the conference this weekend and, and uh, just see the outcome. But I want to go ahead and bring Jimmy, yeah, do the lead singer from uh, Dose on the phone. We got him waiting. Jimmy, are you there? All right, let's see. I think this is our first time doing this. What? Oh, they're bringing, bringing someone speaking. on the air from a oh. phone. We'll get them. Waiting on hold. Uh, oh, I think I just got, actually, I think I got to grab the call, right? There, there it go. is. There you go. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah. What up, dude? How you doing? Good. How are you? Hey, what's your last name again? Brown. Jimmy Brown, Jimmy Brown. lead singer from Dose. Hey, Jimmy, <clears throat> before we play that song, Bounce Back, um, you want to you give us a little... Uh, Little info on what inspired you to write that particular song? Yeah, um, basically, bounce, what bounce back is about is because of situations that had happened in my life, I developed a, kind of a bad attitude, <laughs> and because of that bad attitude, I would kind of act in certain ways towards people and kind of take my anger and, and frustration out on other people. 
Um, and basically it's about just we can bounce back at any time. You know, we can the choices we make and we can really bounce back from anything at any time. Yeah. And not just stay in that, that rut. Right. Yeah, no, because I could have, I could have definitely stayed there and continued to do those same things and and been okay with it. Because the reality was, I would, I would be that way to people, and I would put on this front like I was okay with it. But the reality was, I felt terrible about it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we, you got, you know what? There's, there's so much more to your story as well. And I know that you guys just dropped your new album. Um, and I, I was just watching the video actually on uh, YouTube on D O S E. Is there? YouTube channel and they have all their videos and I'm sure where, where can they find uh, more about your guys's your album? Where can they find that? Um, our website is dose.rocks and they can find that and, and all kinds of information on there. You can find our Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff from there. All that good stuff. Well, dude, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the high school tours. Cause I know that personally your story, how, you know, you were in a suicidal place and, and God led us to meet at a concert and through that divine appointment, one thing led to another. You ended up at church. You heard a story. You got saved, and uh, your life has never been the chain, never been the same. And now you're on these high school tours with us. And <clears throat> I know you've been having a huge impact on the kids. And I want to hear some of the stories. But before we go into that, I want to go ahead and play this song from Dose, Bounce Back. is the song from Dose, Bounce Back. It sounded good. All I got to say is anyone that's driving right now that has a sound system in their car yeah, is thumping bump- hard. It was bumping through my <laughs> headphones too. It is thumping hard. I have a sound system. I got a 12 in the back of my car uh-huh. with obviously, you know, 
amps going running through it. And I put that song on today, <laughs> and it was on YouTube. YouTube's always poor quality. Right. And it was hitting hard. <laughs> that whole album thumps. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Epic, dude. Epic. And you know what? Let people know where they can find more of your music because people might have just tuned in. Now they heard the song, and they got to get the track. Where do they find it again? At dose.rocks. It's D-O-S-E dot rocks. Right on. Well, dude, we got five minutes before the break, and I'm going to carry you over the break. But look at Jimmy. You've been rolling out. Um, you've been rolling out on tour with us since we started, which was last year. We hit 13 schools, and um, you know what? What first of all, what inspired you to uh, to write this whole album? You know, honestly, it it really is just that I gave my life to God and really just started changing things about myself, you know, one of the first things that happens when you, when you accept Christ, you start really doing inventory on your life and you like really got to take a good look at yourself. And I mean, I just started like tearing out the things that I didn't need and just really being honest with myself. And I started talking about things that, that I had been dealing with my entire life that I, I guess I was afraid to talk about before, but what, just, what, being, are, what are a couple of those things? Um, well, one of them, my mom committed suicide when I was young and, I basically struggled with depression and suicidal thoughts my entire life, which I added alcohol on top of drugs on top of women on top of just anything, anything to try and like fill that void. And, you know, when I really started trying to follow Christ, like I just started being honest about everything because I felt like, you know, that was, that's what I was supposed to be doing in music. Like that's why I had this gift to make music and why I was creative, like, why I'm creative mm -hmm. is because I need to use my, my, my life to, to basically write songs about it. Well, I could tell you this, you know, these songs, I, I've heard all the lyrics from, I've heard the whole album, obviously. And, you know, as we've hit all these different high schools, you know, I, as we start going through the songs and about the third song, you'll talk about the God complex song. And, and that's, um, you know, it was, uh, what's the God complex about? I forget what you say. You kind of open it up about, um, your fear of like giving your life to God or something? I, I basically, I just talk about it in the beginning. I tell the kids, you know, you know, my mom committed suicide when I was mm -hmm. this age and I've struggled with it and basically just tell them maybe 15 to 20 seconds about myself. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of just see like the kids like just let down this wall mm -hmm. and they become so much more open to what we're saying and almost like, almost like they're comfortable and they feel okay to be there. Mm -hmm. I guess, kind of. Yeah, you mm -hmm. see you see the whole dynamic change. Because at first, you know, the bell rings, every, all the kids mob the stage. It's in the middle of the quad. Everyone's kind of sussing out, like, who are these dudes? What's going right. on with this band? You know, you know, you're at school. There's, like, peer pressure. Everyone's kind of bobbing their head the mm -hmm. first song. The second song, they're getting more into it. And then once he says that, it's like everything just kind of changes. It connects. And the kids are, like, listening to every single word that's coming off that stage at that point because they realize we don't have it figured out. And there's so many people can re relate to this, even listeners now. Yeah, a lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are suffering. And a lot of times, like what Jimmy was saying is, you try to mask that. You try to cover it. And a lot of people can relate to that. You know, definitely in high school, because you got to put on an image front. You got to try to be sometimes something that you're not, you know, to try to keep up with stuff. And when you realize, that when you're trying to cover something that's really hurting, it takes a lot out of you. And so when you have somebody speaking truth that connects, oh man, I, I could make sense that those walls come down. So yeah, this whole thing, the high school thing is so an amazing thing. Tell us some cool stories, man, because I know that you stay connected like we all do with these kids on, on social media as they start following us and they DM us. What are some cool stories that, that you've heard how your music has influenced um, these kids' lives? You know, I mean, I think the biggest one is... Dang it, I can't, and I can't remember her name off the top of my head, is, is the girl from that first San Diego show. Remember the girl that was in the wheelchair? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. You know what? Hey, Jimmy, check this out. We got about 30 seconds left. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to continue this story. I got some crazy news about her, some amazing news about her. Mm -hmm. uh, when we come back from the break, let me give the number out. We're going to be taking calls after this. 888-564-6173. 888-564-6173. If you're dealing with depression, alcohol, drugs, feeling lonely, whatever it is, we want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. And we want to give you some love through the gospel of Jesus Christ, some grace and truth. God could do miracles in your life just like he did in Jimmy's life, my life, Sean's life.
Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole whosoever's movement. It's oh, a yeah. bunch of broken people coming together to come love on these kids. So we'll be talking to you guys in two minutes right when we get back from the break. Peace. More live with Ryan Race coming up. Is everything all right? Sure. Call now. 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag Live Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say whoop de doo Back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say what I warn you. Loud noises. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always wanted to do that. <laughs> All right, let's get Jimmy back on the line. Before we went to break, we were talking about our high school no- uh, tours that kill the noise, and um, just um, the impact we've been having on on these kids, and and the stories of even how Jimmy, the lead singer from Dose, is on the on the line, just how he was suicidal and his his mom committed suicide, and he was carrying this depression and and these suicidal thoughts over his life for many years, and till he had an encounter with the living God, and his life has never been the same. And now he started this band Dose, and he just changes the lyrics, and now he's on the tours with us, telling his story and playing music, and they're just impacting. Uh, people's lives. We heard uh, the the song "Bounce Back" from Dosa uh, right before the break, and I suggest you guys track down the album. They got the YouTube channel uh, Dose on YouTube. It's amazing. Uh, the whole album is uh, it sounds incredible. So, anyway, Jimmy, are you still with us? Yes. Oh, I just took yep. him off the air. Here we go. There he is. He's back. There you are, Jimmy. So, yeah. hey, we were talking about how your music has impacted these kids. As we go to these high schools, uh, tell me about that girl from San Diego. I think her Instagram name's like Chewy or something. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just remember um, how much of an impact it had on her, the messages that I kept getting from her. And then eventually, she didn't you say she's starting like a Christian club at her school? Well, well first of all, that, yeah. So the whole story is we went down and we played at Chula Vista down there. And, you know, we, we gave the message. You guys played. We did the altar call. And then there was that one girl, Chewy, that had like, she was in a wheelchair, green punk rock hair, green and black hair, and she was just kind of real distant. So when we went up and I started talking to her for a couple hours after, finally after the end of this conversation for two hours of trying to like love on her, she says, I'm sorry, I'm kind of out of it. I took all these pills and I I tried committing suicide last night. And we were like, what the heck? Hmm. So then from there, you know, 
we just uh, we 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 all got her number and we were reaching out to her. I know I sent her Living Water, the Chuck Smith Living Water book, and Lacey's book, and some Shine Bible studies. But I know she was cho- she was chopping it up with you back and forth, right? On yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we would just go back and forth, and it's just amazing to see that these tours have that that type of an impact. I mean, and it, it's crazy because you can see the need for it. You can see in so many kids' eyes, like, just the pain that they're dealing with. Yeah, I mean, she was, I mean, her story is she got thrown from the car. She got hit by DUI, and she was, like, six months old and got thrown from the car and hit the curb and broke her back when she was, like, you know, I, I don't know, it was, like, six months old or something like that. But, uh... So she was carrying this, you know, bad deck of cards, you know, if you will. And uh, God used us to get down there and to talk to her and minister to her. And now she's on fire for God. She just started uh, the Bible club back at that school. And now we're actually going to go back to that school to let the school know about the Lord. So there's just so many stories of these kids uh, wherever we go. What What's some other stories of some, some kids that have been uh, texting you or... or Instagram and you. You know, there was a girl at, at Chino High School, <clears throat> and I guess she had an issue with cutting. And she started writing, like, song lyrics on her hands and stuff where she was cutting. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty pretty crazy. Instead of cutting, she starts yeah. writing. Hmm. Yeah. There's a lot. There's also a lot, of, uh, a lot of cutting going on. Even when we went down to Azusa, I remember God, when we were speaking, God just told me to start talking about cutting and, and depression right mm-hmm. out of the gates before I even said anything. Yeah. And literally the whole front row of the kids, you know, the girls and guys, they all started bawling. Remember that in Azusa? They yeah. just started crying. It was like crazy the way the Holy Spirit just dropped in that place. And Kids are hurting, man. Well, dude, we, we got to keep going, man. I'm just psyched that this tour is living on. And, uh, you know, I know right now we, we have the past 13 schools that we went to. Plus, I know we have another five. We're, we're working out the details right now. And I was at the pastor's conference and we probably have another 15 just the people that I talked to. So I hope to God that we triple or quadruple the amount of schools we hit last year. And I pray to God that we will have to even buy another sound system. So we have two tours going at one time. Mm. Can you imagine that? That'd be amazing. How That'd about three great. or four tours going across <laughs> the United States at one time? It's needed. It's definitely it needed. That's what we need. Well, hey, Jimmy. Thank you for being on the air. And, um, dude, that new album's epic. And I'm looking awesome. forward to uh, to going crazy with you guys this next school year. Thank you guys for having me. All right, brother. Love you, man. Take it easy. Love hey, you, where, where, where can people find you on Instagram? What's your what's your Instagram name? Uh, just mine or the bands? Uh, yours and the bands. The bands is just Dose, D-O-S-E underscore music. And mine is just J-I-M-M-Y underscore note. Dose, yeah, dose. underscore dose. So yeah, just look up Dose Music and uh, you'll find Jimmy. You can contact him. All right, brother. All love right, you, guys. man. Thanks for being on. All right. Right on. If you're tuning in right now, this is Live with Ryan Reese. We were just kind of recapping everything that God's been doing through the, the Who Survivors and the Kill the Noise tour. If you're listening right now, maybe some of the things that we're speaking about, stuff that Jimmy was talking about, battling with depression, suicide, and maybe you're out there and you're, you're struggling, man. You have some questions. Um, that's why we have this show. You know, we, we entitled in the beginning, Every Voice Matters, man. And that's why we come out here on these Saturday nights to be able to connect with you. Um, you can always go to ryan-reese.com. You can watch us live here in the studio. Um, go to the website. You can look at all of Ryan's um, archives as well of all his teachings on Shine. But if you have a question, you want to call in, the number is 888-564-6173. Again, 888-564-6173. Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and grab this call from Lake Force. We got Dustin calling in from Lake Force. How are you doing tonight, Dustin? Um, I'm doing a bit better, definitely better than I'm hearing from you. Thank you so much for bringing me um, on your show tonight. No um, I have a, I have a bit of a question in regards to um, un, ungratefulness and um, disagreements um, with your with your parents as it relates to my uh, as it relates to my career. Um, right now, I'm actually um, going into my senior year at the University of Southern California. I actually did one of my classes final project was based upon the um, whosoever's and what you're doing with your high school tours. No way! Uh, 
No, it, seriously. I uh, <laughs> one of my classes this semester was actually um, skateboarding business, and oh, epic. Uh, yeah. It's a really, really neat class. I wish they would invite you in to speak. I'll um, come down. Good. Invite me. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll tell my, I'll tell my professor. Um, <laughs> but uh, what, um, what's the, what the dilemma has been um, has been that I've been working with this. Um, I've been kind of like, un, I guess you could say ungrateful. I get really down on myself a lot. Like mm-hmm. I'll start to feel. Like obviously, I, I'm a Christian, and I want to I want to succeed in my in my career, which I'm trying to actually get into uh, media and radio in particular. Mm. Um, and um, I know that I know that what I'm what I'm doing what I'm doing is good. I, I can see that I'm making some progress, but I tend to really get down on myself a lot. And my mom tells me that my ungratefulness and my um, my negativity really just it, it, that it, that's problematic and that's keeping God away from me. I'll sometimes like blame God, get really upset. And um, I, I, I want to know whether or not my own un, ungratefulness um, for the progress I've made, if, if, that's, if that's like problematic. She says I'm like bringing like negative energy into a house, right. I'm making her feel bad. Um, I just had a nasty split with my, with my agent over some debit card fraud that he might have been involved in and my I'm really feeling horrible about that, and we're having disagreements. I'm wondering if I'm honoring my mother uh, because I've been trying to defend him because this is my only link. Um, so I don't, I don't know if my ungratefulness is a, is a sin, and it could be inviting something demonic into my life. Some things have gone wrong medically for me as well, and then also, um, like whether or not I'm, I'm really obeying obeying my mother because that is a biblical commandment. Right. And I don't want to foul. Cool. You know, I would say, Dustin, you know, the first thing I would talk about is she, as soon as you started speaking, I was thinking about some of the studies we sat in this this week on, on the grace and truth. Um, because one thing that can happen in your relationship with God is that you can make things harder on yourself than you really need to be. And when your relationship with God feels like a grind or maybe some of the things that your your mom is saying, like, well, you need to do this and then God's going to bless you and you might not be blessing because you're doing this particular thing. Understand that grace is God's, you know, that unmerited favor, man. God has such a love for each one of us. Um, It's not by all these works that we do. You know, the works come out of our life and then they flow by the Spirit of God. And for you, as you you grow as a man, yeah, your parents' influence, you brought up the scripture to honor thy parents. And that is the first commandment that is of a blessing for sure. But you do need to do what God is showing you. And as he backs it up in in the word and he leads you by your Holy Spirit, you need to find comfort in that. I would uh, say to you that the most important thing you need to do, Dustin, is to always have contentment in the Lord. For, um, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. A very common verse. So many people repeat it. Um, but the main emphasis of it is that I know how to serve the Lord when everything's going good and when everything's going bad. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you just always rely on that, the reliance of the Holy Spirit in your life. And I believe that the Lord will work out the details. And don't let the fear of man and people overwhelm you where you can't see clearly. Mm-hmm. And when there's confusion and uncertainty and all those things, that's where the enemy starts you know, winning in our life. Um, but the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Yeah. There, right, there's right. not a, but there's not a problem with with wanting to work hard. No, I mean, man. It's, he's saying it's, yeah. there's a lack of success that yep. he feels ungrateful because yep. I I've always feel like I want to be better. I want right. to work harder. I want right. to. I want to do more. There's like that fire. Yeah. There's that fire that's yeah. that's inside people. I don't think that's right. That's the problem. But I think the the key is to, you know, because I, I I'm always worn with myself mm. with trying to be better and do you know bigger things right. or whatever. But there's it's you know I have to be content in in God. Right. You know, and know that God's in control and I can't strive. Mm-hmm. So I work hard, but I know that God's in control. For sure. And you have to be able to just sit back and know that God has you right where he wants you and um, that he's in complete control of of what's going on in your life. So, I mean, I don't know if you're like, you feel ungrateful or you're just, you're striving to, to for success. 
Yeah, it's it, it is sometimes I feel like 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 the accomplishments I've made that's kind of kind of gone down gone down the drain, and I need to I need to get uh, more uh, especially to try to ser- try to serve God with what talent He He has given me. Thank you so much for the yeah. for the encouragement um, that that's really really valuable. Thank Very you so cool. much. Awesome. All right, God bless you. All, All right, right. take Thank care. You. Take it easy, Dustin. Checkity check. All right, there we go. Um, where's this one? Here we go. Go ahead and take uh, Alan from Torrance. How you doing, Alan? What's your question tonight? Hi, my question is how you know Jimmy was talking about how he would fill a void with women, mm-hmm. and I just feel like uh, I'm guilty of that. I'm backslidden, and mm-hmm. I was just long story short, you know, I'm involved with this girl who's not saved and. I'm just not a good testimony because she knows what I believe in, and I'm just such a bad example of Christianity. And how can I make things right? You know, just easy. obviously I have to stop fornicating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's easy. Um, all you have to do is just uh, cut the cut the strings and just ask God to repent, which means just um, go the opposite direction that you're going now, and ask God to forgive you. And then just start that new day with that new relationship right now. You can literally get off the phone with us and give her a call and just say, I need to break it because I'm going to serve God. And then just, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. He'll work those details out. Obviously, you're you're looking for a wife one day. You know, you want to, you obviously like girls. Right. <laughs> so yeah. you got to basically, you know, just... Dude, set your eyes on God. Get Get plugged into the source and let him bring that girl... That he designed, that he that he has for you, mm-hmm. you know, he has your your soulmate, or he has that person he created for you, and he'll bring that person in your time. But he needs to get you dialed in, get you ready for her, and instead of going out and wasting time. And I'm sure you're with this girl because she's hot, mm-hmm. you know. Obviously, that's why <laughs> yeah. you're hanging out with her. But um, you know, you you don't want to waste your time. You do not want to waste your time and get caught up in situations where you're sleeping around, which this is a situation you're doing. And the, another thing that could happen is you could end up getting this girl pregnant. And then your whole life will be turned upside down. I mean, I'm married and I have kids and my whole life is turned upside down. You do not want to be in that situation. God has a plan for you. He created you as a masterpiece. And uh, you just got to just gotta turn to him and follow him. Yep. And he'll work out those details, man. He loves you, dude. And there's grace. There's so much grace there for you. God's, Jesus said, I didn't come to the world to judge the world. I came to save the world. He's Amen. not judging you. He's not He's not stoked that you're in this situation because he, he has a higher calling on your life. Yeah, he knows. Uh, he knows that I went against it because I know better. It's worse when you know better, you know? Yeah, and that's the thing. You don't want to feel that way. And I just, I just really hope even though it's not my position, you probably agree. Like, I just want to get this girl saved because she was part of my old life before I was saved. Mm-hmm. Now I'm saved, and now we're back. And it's just like this is not. You're godly. right back to where you were. I know. Well, look, dude. This yeah, is... I'm right back. I backslid. You know what to do. Just do it, man. Just, just tell her. Say, hey, we're not going to be sleeping around anymore. I'm going to go to church. That's where I'm going to be. If you want to roll with, let's go. You know, take her to yeah. church. I and, like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and don't, do that. Tomorrow. Don't get caught. All, don't. Yeah. Well, Sunday. Sunday's tomorrow. Perfect. Sunday's first tomorrow. day. Yeah, tomorrow. And if this is God's will, then he's going to work out those details. But don't get, don't go somewhere and hang out alone like a house, especially if you guys have already been sleeping around. Oh, yeah. You know what happens after that. So, you know. Thank God, you so much. God's got you, man. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Alan. Peace. You know, how relatable is that? So that, many people. <laughs> that's important too, because like you said, like he doesn't want to feel that way. And so you do something about it. And like you said, it's really easy. You just come back. You just come back to the Lord. Let's go ahead and grab, um, we got Edward calling from Marietta, California. What's up, You're Edward? listening to Live with Ryan Reese. How you doing, Edward? Good. How you doing, bro? Doing what's, good. What's the question tonight, sir? Here. I had a comment. Uh, I had the privilege to meet you back on October 16th. 2013. Where was that? Of all, of all places, is home in California, a little sticky town. You were doing like a little whosoever introduction there. Wait, wait where was it? What town? It was out in Holman. Bowman? Homeland, California. Oh, okay. Homeland. Homeland. I remember. Out. Well, keep going. Awesome, yeah. 15. 
Okay, cool. So what up? We, we met up when you were out there? Yeah, afterward I got privileged to hang out with you a little bit, have some pizza and met your dog. <laughs> pizza yeah, my dog re- yeah a french bulldog yeah. before he died rest his soul um no, right on that. man cool so yeah. so uh what happened <laughs> uh just i just want to be grateful to meet you my friend in, kind of introduced me to who so I was back in 2011 oh mm-hmm. right on cool yeah, man so it's good so it's, it's been cool bro i just wanted to thank you for that well, well, no worries man, man. i listen to your uh show on Saturday nights as much as I can. Very cool. Dude, that's but, right. But the main reason I'm calling tonight, too, bro, I have a prayer request. Mm-hmm. Um, been a journeyman carpenter for 15 years now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been kind of up and down and laid off since January now. Mm-hmm. And I've been boozing it up, bro, and, and I've been having suicidal thoughts, you know? Yep. Even, like, uh, premeditation stuff. Yep. And especially when I get all boozed up and high on that, you know, booze. Yep. No, um, I've heard it and, before. Uh, and uh, by the grace of God, bro, I haven't got in my life to get out of it. But then, you know, a couple of days go by and Satan's knocking at the door, man, and just putting all these thoughts, you know, because mm. it's just, it's hard. It's all, you know, it's just hard. Okay. So I just have a prayer request for strength, bro. We're, well, we're going to do that, but let me give you a couple couple little words really quick. You got to get plugged into a church, man. It's so important. You got you to kick the booze, stop drinking, get a Bible, start reading, get plugged into a church, find someone for accountability so you have someone to call for prayer. Go to your local church and have them anoint you with oil and lay their hands on you. There's something about people laying their hands on you and praying for you, man, and, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. You need that. Holy Spirit, fire and power in your life. And, um, you know, like I said the verse earlier tonight, just seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added. I'm not telling you it's going to be a, a cakewalk. It's not going to be easy. It's a battle. We live in a, in, a, in a war, a spiritual war. But God loves you and he has a plan for you. And the enemy, he wants to take you out just like he wants to take me out and everyone else that's followers of Christ. Hmm. But God loves you, man. And he does not judge you. And he has a plan for you, man. I'm telling you, you got to surrender and you don't have to live this way. People that are listening right now, you guys don't have to live this way. God will empower you. He will send his Holy Spirit and he will, you have God's spirit inside you and you could talk to Jesus and he will talk back and anything that you ask, uh, he knows it. Just ask him. He wants to hear you talk to him. He wants to hear you pray. It says that the throne of God is like uh, your prayers are like incense of the saints are in the throne of God. God loves them. And he will answer those prayers according to his eternal purpose in your life. Mm. He loves you, Edward. You know what to do, man. Just throw those bottles out tonight. If you got them at home, if you're drinking now, just throw them away and pick up the Bible, man, and get plugged into church tomorrow morning. And the more you're plugged in, God's going to start transforming your life. He's going to He's going to make you a new creation. So I want to pray for you. Is Thank that cool? You. Yes. All right, brother. I love you, right? Lord, I lift up Edwards in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, Father God, that you will reach down from heaven and touch him right now. If, he is, if he's drunk, sober him up by the power of the Holy Ghost, God. You are in the business of doing miracles, Lord. You took care of the Israelites for 40 years. You fed them manna. You opened the Red Sea. Jesus, you ray la- you ray la- Raise Lazarus from the dead. Not only that, but the power of the Holy Spirit raise you from the dead. Lord, thy will be done in Edward's life. Lord, clean him up. Bring people into his life that can be accountable around his life, Lord. Give him a hunger and desire to read the word of God and start transforming his life, Lord. Let today be the day that the Lord has made that he will never go back, that this be a new day in his life, a new chapter in his life, that he will walk into the promised land that you have created for him, that he will not get stuck in this wilderness experience looking back at Egypt, looking back at his old life, that he can walk into the land of milk and honey, that spirit-led life that you created for every single one of us, Lord. Fire and power upon him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thanks, bro. All right, All right dude. Edward. Walk walk into that walk, dude, that God has for you, man. Pray tonight when I get oh. off the phone with you. And oh. uh you got this, all right? I'm not drunk right now, bro. I just came off a seven day binger though and you say I'm detoxing and just trying to get straight with the Lord again, man. Okay. Well Glad dude, you called in, let man. today be the day. All right, man. Love yeah. you, all right? Love you too. Thanks, Ryan. All right, brother.
That's so amazing. You know, yeah. a couple of years ago, that, that connection that was made there and then how he can just tune into the radio. I was telling you when I was on my vacation, you know, the direct messages that you have like an Instagram or whatever, I was kind of overlooking some of them if they're not friends or whatever. I saw all this awesome feedback of stuff that, that God does in people's lives listening to this, this radio show and the things that we've been able to be a part of, dude. It's an amazing thing. It's it's awesome. It's got God stuff, you know. I think we have a few minutes left. Yep. Well, you know what, you guys? You guys have been listening to the show, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. We do it. <laughs> we're, we're here on Saturday nights, and we could be doing a million other things on Saturday <laughs> yeah. night. The fact that I'm in a radio studio with you, Sean. That was a pretty crazy thing. On Saturday night. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> and you guys, you guys have no idea. So, you know, me and Ryan, we do share our hearts a lot of times, and we try to be as transparent as possible. And sometimes it is a trip for me as well, right? Like, we ran wild together for we so many years. We were party animals. We were party animals. <laughs> There's no possible way. Friday, Saturday, Sunday <laughs> nights, every, all during the week. We were, we were maniacs, and now we're in studio trying to encourage people out there because right now it's a Saturday night. You're going out to the club. You're battling. Maybe you are, uh, you know, stripping, and now you are about to go to that thing, and you know that it's not where you need to be. We want you to know that God loves you. God loves you so much. He can do a work in your life. And we had all the friends in the world. We had opportunities in the flesh all the time. I still do. Right. <laughs> and the thing is, is that having those things, dude, we couldn't um, fake it any longer. Like there was an yeah. issue in our life and we needed help. Absolutely. And there is help. God is able. And for those that know the Lord, that kind of like, like he, Edward was just saying, got getting caught up. People get caught up. Yeah, easy. And all you need to do, God is long suffering and he patient and he has an enduring love for you. He's not just waiting for you. He's not like looking over the clouds, waiting for you to mess up and then he just cast you aside. No, he's there with you in the mix of everything that you're going through. So we want you guys tonight. The Bible says this, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Come close and God will take over your life. That's it. You're going to be rough around the edges. It's all good. Just seek his will and everything you do. You know, with the Whosoever's as well, the Whosoever's, as Ryan was saying, the Kill the Noise tour, that's like the main focus right now. But you can go to the Whosoever's.com. There's so much product I was telling you about earlier, man. The tie-dyes are out. There's a lot of dope gear that's out there. And all of the, the accessories, the T-shirts, all that kind of stuff, all the purchase, it goes right back into the movement so you can be able to do a lot of different events. That's awesome. Well, we got a comment coming in. We, we can't take this call right now, but it says, thanks for the show. Been blessed. Uh, he has a similar testimony as Jimmy. Give a shout out to Joel out in Temecula, California. We love you, man. And uh, I don't know. That's I guess awesome. we're going to be talking to everyone next week. Yeah. Next, next. Uh, oh, UFC 200. <laughs> UFC. UFC. <laughs> <laughs> it's going down. Hey, real quick. I was telling you the other, the other day, my son, five-year-old Jet, he's praying for Conor McGregor. You know? That's it's good. funny. You yeah. got to be praying for this world. Love, the, love people. Love the Lord. And God will bless your life. Peace. Peace. This has been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.